I think what's really critical is that our markets, which are about 300 billion in terms of fashion and lifestyle sales annually, last year were only at 6% online penetration. So very different from, let's say, the European or the US markets. We're really at the early stages, about 10 years behind where you know those more developed markets are. And so we really see um, this current period, which is obviously driven by the pandemic, as a period where a lot of customers uh, try out e-commerce services for the first time and shifting online. And we're benefiting from that long-term trend that's now being accelerated. Uh, Christoph, let me just carry on with you. And I don't know if Patrick wants to chip in afterwards as well, but why is your profit margin so low? Um, I look at Inditex, I look at the big uh, global clothing retailers, and they, and they seem to have very, very healthy double-digit uh, profit margins. Yours on a, a, an EBITDA basis, I believe, is, is about 2.8% as well. For, for such a um, non-bricks-and-mortar growing company, I would imagine you want to get that figure up dramatically. I mean, I think there's, there's two critical factors in here. First of all, we're predominantly a third-party retailer, so we are selling major global, but also very importantly, a lot of local brands in our markets. And so we're a retailer, we're not a brand um, ourselves. And as a platform that is still pretty young, you know, we're not yet 10 years old, We've op we're operating in 17 countries, we're heavily focused on in investing into the long-term infrastructure. So building our fulfillment centers, our delivery infrastructure, our technology platform, and then acquiring a lot of these customers. So we've prioritized um, growth over profitability. But having said that, despite that focus on growth and long-term investment, we're clearly making progress towards getting to profitability and this being our second quarter. We've said that long-term, we're thinking margins are going to move towards the high single digits um, adjusted EBITDA margins. And we feel well on track and, and kind of proving that out with this quarter as we're making gradual progress. But growth is still number one priority and then profitability is second. Yeah, and Patrick, I'll just pick up with you on that. There is a lot of people who are saying bricks and mortar, that it's had its day, it may be a nice add on, but it's online is the way forward. A lot of companies, both uh, third party retailers and indeed the companies themselves, the Indotexes of this world, uh, they want a slice of the online market. What can you at uh, Global Fashion Group offer, offer that they can't? So first of all, we, we offer a, an access to 15 million customers in markets which are relatively hard to access. And you talked about profit margins before. One reason, one reason why they're a little bit lower is because it's actually pretty expensive to uh, build the infrastructure in markets where e-commerce is not as developed and you don't have all the third party infrastructure available. You might have already available in the UK or in the US. Um, we basically have a turnkey solution for those retailers. Um, so they don't need to build their own warehouse, their own customer service, their own fulfillment network. All of that is there. And, and many brands have taken advantage of that, um, both global brands, which don't really have uh, or had a presence there and now have a presence thanks to Global Fashion Group, but also many local and especially many small brands, because you can imagine many designers in let's call it Australia or Colombia, they're very good at designing product. They're very good at understanding the customer, but they might not have the resources or the talent or even the interest to distribute that product online. And that's where we come in.